Revelation of Fake Mountain. This revelation is a high-level perspective of the society we live in. The society that Jesus is building and the society that Satan is building. In the book of Daniel, there was a powerful king named Nebuchadnezzar. Long ago, he was given a dream by God about the days we are now living in. In his dream, this king saw a giant statue representing the major kingdoms of man on the earth. He saw a small rock come and hit this statue at the feet, shattering it to pieces. Then this rock did something amazing. It grew and grew until it covered the whole earth. This rock is Jesus. And now he is a giant mountain on the earth with about one third of the world claiming him as their God. Just as it says in Micah 4.1, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of all the mountains. It will be exalted above all the hills, and the peoples will stream to it. But, just as Jesus is building a mountain, Satan is creating his own mountain, a counterfeit mountain, a fake mountain, similar to when he tried to build the Tower of Babel. You need to see both mountains, how they work and operate to fully understand what is happening in society. Both mountains have many levels, but every level on Satan's mountain is just a corrupted counterfeit of a level on God's mountain. Let's examine some of the levels of these two mountains. At the base of these mountains is the first level. This level is a person's most fundamental belief, which is the answer to the question, who is God? On God's mountain, the answer is, Jesus is Lord. As it says in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock, I will build my church. But on Satan's mountain, the answer to the question, who is God, is, you are God. Everything is within you. You don't need some make-believe God. God potential is inside of you. So follow your will your aspirations, your desires, your pleasures, not some dead Jewish God. You yourself are God. This lie was the first deception in Genesis 3.5. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. How you answer that first question, who is God? will determine which mountain you start climbing up. The next level of these mountains is based on another of a person's fundamental core beliefs. It's the answer to the question, how was the universe created and everything in it? On God's mountain, God created the heavens and the earth and all life therein as it says in Genesis 1.1. But on Fake Mountain, no one created the universe. The universe was unintended. It was an accident out of random, unknown chaos. And the extreme fine-tuning of the universe to allow life? Well, that was just a coincidence, nothing more. 
and life spontaneously arose out of a puddle of organic chemicals. And the marvelously brilliant high-level genetic designs we see and the harmony of life and nature, well, that's just from random mutations and the process of elimination. And then somewhere along the line, these life forms became conscious. Not because of a soul, but just accidentally through some chemical process. And if you don't believe all this, well, pfft, you're just an uneducated dunce who just doesn't understand science. But let's continue up the mountains and look at other levels of society and compare the differences. Both mountains have a level called freedom. On God's mountain, it's liberty, the freedom of moral people to live. But on fake mountain, it's the freedom to sin, the freedom to engage in every kind of immoral pleasure you like, with no unnecessary restrictions for your lusts whatsoever. When the Israelites were taken out of slavery in Egypt, some of them thought that God was giving them the freedom to sin. But that belief just led to their downfall. Both mountains have a level called art. On God's mountain, it's beautiful, creative, colorful, skillful, diverse, and wonderful. But on fake mountain, it's junk. It's not a different style of art. It's fake art done by those who reject artistic standards of excellence. And it gets worse and worse over time. Both mountains have a level called news. On God's mountain, the news informs you enough to make an intelligent conclusion. But on Fake Mountain, it's fake news done by fake experts who will give you just the information necessary to come to their predefined conclusions. Now you'll notice that at every level of Fake Mountain, there are so-called experts who try to justify why their level on fake mountain is legitimate. Just as in the days of Jesus, there were experts in the law who were not experts at all. Let's continue. Both mountains have a level called justice. On God's mountain, Justice works to protect the innocent and convict the guilty. But on Fake Mountain, fake justice works to protect the guilty, protect the criminal, and call them the victim, and then ignore or even harass the innocent. Both mountains have a level called religion. On God's mountain, it's a personal relationship with your Creator and the power to be changed into His image. But on Fake Mountain, you have something else. You've got traditions, rituals, ceremonies, rules and laws, politics, concepts, spells, and even spiritual powers but no relationship with your creator. And without that, it's just fake religion. As Jesus said in Matthew 7, 23, depart from me, I never knew you. 
Both mountains have a level called education. On God's mountain, it produces people who are knowledgeable about their expertise and have strong character. But on fake mountain, it produces people with a head knowledge about a subject, yet morally bankrupt. Both mountains have a level called charity. On the Lord's mountain, it's voluntary. It comes from the heart. Charity lifts people up, helps them, and leads them to freedom and independence. But on fake mountain, fake charity doesn't come voluntarily. It comes from a state bureaucracy. And it leads people into bondage, entitlement, and a continual dependence on others. Both mountains have a level called sex and gender. On God's mountain, there are two genders, man and woman. They come together, love each other, and through marriage, build a family. But on fake mountain, there is a never-ending number of genders. And based on lust, which is fake love, Every form of perversion is justified. And how dare you say otherwise? Both mountains have a level called government. On God's mountain, the systems of government protect people's rights, establish justice, lead to prosperity and development. But on fake mountain, you have systems of government that are totalitarian, protecting a ruling class, and are often based on Marxism. Both mountains have a level called elections. On God's mountain, elections are fair, secure, and democratic. But on fake mountain, the winners and losers are chosen through intrigue and fraud. As you can see, there is a level of the mountain for every aspect of our society. For every level, there's the Lord's way of doing things, and there's Satan's way. There are many more levels on fake mountain that we don't have time to cover. For example, Fake sports competition. Fake health care. Fake immigration. Fake medicine. Fake public servants. Fake marriage. Fake teachers. Fake climate prophets. Fake heroes. Fake investigations. Fake judges. Fake fact checkers. fake money, and fake president. The whole mountain is fake, all because we've allowed people to twist the definition of things. But now, let's go up and view a very high level of these mountains, and we'll see something interesting about Fake Mountain and its main objective. One of the highest levels of the mountains is a level called International Cooperation and Agreements. On the Lord's Mountain, international cooperation is when nations voluntarily come together, working and cooperating with each other on important 
international issues. For example, to end slavery, to end tyranny, to stop war, to stop starvation, etc. But on Fake Mountain, this level's intention is not international cooperation. Its intention is to centralize all governing powers into a few organizations and a few people. Why? Because the whole purpose of Fake Mountain is Satan's original plan. Satan wants the same thing he wanted in heaven before he got kicked out. And that is everyone and everything under him. And the best way to get that is having all governing powers centralized under him in the hands of a few people and a few groups. A globalist agenda. And this plan will never work when there are free, independent, prosperous, and thriving nations. Those type of nations never want to hand over their sovereignty. They'll never give it up. So they must be tricked into it through intrigue and a never-ending parade of international emergencies. Now on the other hand, the main reason for God's mountain is told us in 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Jesus delivers the kingdoms on earth to God the Father. When he puts an end to all evil rule, evil authority, and evil power. Jesus' goal is to do the will of the Father, finishing the Father's original plans and purposes for this earth. And Jesus finishes this work in Jerusalem, which is why Jerusalem is the most internationally contested city in all history. In conclusion, Fake Mountain has been allowed to grow to full fruition, like the tares in Matthew 1330. The higher the mountains get, the more the people will be divided, because there is no unity between the two mountains. They don't mix. They are diametrically opposed. And the people get farther and farther away as they climb. If you're on Fake Mountain, it's time to get off. Fake Mountain will eventually be exposed, shown to be worthless and corrupt, based on lies and deceptions, and thrown into the sea. The world needed to see Fake Mountain as it is, to really understand why God's mountain is so glorious. And if you're already on God's mountain, you need to make sure that none of your ideas, philosophies, or habits originated from Fake Mountain. Because many Christians have beliefs that are a mixture of both mountains. And as Christians, you need to be ready for revival when the multitudes flee fake mountain and start coming to the mountain of the Lord. This concludes the revelation of fake mountains.